in this video we are going to go over trig limits okay so these are the two identities that i want you to to keep as simple as uh, as a limit x approaches zero for a sine function when you have sine x over x of course x is just denoting anything that you can have okay what it means is uh, even in a case where you get to have let's say sine 2x and then over 2x so the basic idea is what is attached to sine should be the same as a denominator in such a case when the limit is approaching zero the limit is equal to a one okay so the other identity is limit as x approaches zero for the cosine function when you have one minus cosine of x provided this part is matching up with the denominator the limit is equivalent to a zero okay so with that kind of understanding we can now look at uh, some examples to help us solidify with uh, the knowledge that we, we have acquired so far okay so i believe it will not be very difficult for you to remember the identities okay so before we get to look at the actual example can work with uh, let's say the limit uh, x approaches zero and then you have sine ax over bx so if you understand how to simplify this everything else will be an over. So a basic idea of a basic understanding is we want that this part should be the same for us to have a one. Otherwise, it's going to be very complicated for us to simplify it. So how can we make it to be the same? So remember that if you have a function, sine function attached to something, we can't basically get to remove that. So we just have to temper with what? The denominator. Now, what is our goal? So our goal is that we want this to be equivalent to that. So what do we do? So we can multiply the numerator and the denominator with a. Okay. So in the next step, what are we going to have? So we'll have the limit as x gets to approach zero sine ax. Okay. So whenever we multiply a function, a sine or a trigonometric function by anything, it is going to be there. So we have a sine ax. And then on the denominator part, we will have the a attaching to the bx okay is it matching up now not exactly we need, just need to have ax for us to for it to be equal to a one okay so we'd have to remove now uh, or factorize the b so how do you factorize the b so we can factorize the b in this case so if we remove the b there because it's unneeded then we are going to remove it to be one over what one over b so removing one of b from the bottom is the same as just multiplying by the b because if you do multiply it will take you back to the same form so just remove it there and attach it as you've seen okay so we already have ax now this a that is here we can as well as take it back there so that we have a over b so i can move it so we have so let me write that properly so we have a over b now this part you can see now that it's matching up what is attached to the sine function and what is on the denominator part are the same so it can now be equal to a one so on the next step all i can do is i can just say this is equal to what a one so we have one multiplied by a over b so which is basically just going to be a over b so we can therefore conclude to say the question that we were given which was the limit as x approaches zero where you have sine ax over bx the answer is equal to a over b so this is just applying the identity that we've learned about the sine trigonometric limits okay very simple and straightforward i believe you've gotten how to go about it now let's consider uh, an example about the cosine function so let's say they want us to find the limit as uh, x approaches 0, 1 minus cosine, let's say 6x, and then on the denominator we have uh, 2x. Okay, so equal we had uh, observed the identity was that what is attached to the cosine function should be equal to the denominator. Now if you observe what we have, we have 2x and 6x. How do you basically make them to be equal? This one is straightforward as, as compared to what we are from looking at, at from the previous example. 
So all we just have to do is the two x has to be multiplied by a three, right? So the essence of you performing any operation is to make sure that the function remains the same. So multiply by three over three to make quantities of the denominator to be what? To just be a two x, right? Okay. So at this point we have the limit as x approaches zero, one minus cosine six x. So on the denominator, if you multiply, you have six x. Now remember that on top we also have the three that is still remaining because we've not multiplied it. So understand that you can also move this so that it becomes a coefficient of the limit. Okay, that's how we work with limits. So I can move that three, and then it will become it will go to the other side. So our three limit as x approaches zero is equal to uh, this is what we have. So at this point, this is basically the same. So we do understand that we can now substitute what? A zero. Okay, maybe without even removing that. So after substituting a zero, this is going to be three times what? Zero, right? So three by zero, which is basically going to be what? Which is just going to be a zero. So the limit therefore is a zero. Okay, so all in all, what is necessary is for you to remember the identities. For sine, whatever we are going to give you, make sure you get to express it in the form of sine x over x. And this is equal to a 1. And then finally, for cosine, the limit as x gets to approach 0, 1 minus cosine of x over x is equal to what? A 0. The moment you just understand how you get to simplify these to taking them in different forms, for sine and cosine respectively, things will be easier for you. So I hope with the two examples and of course explanations, you are able to answer the cosine and the, and the sine limits. Watch out for the video where we will get to talk about the, uh, the limit dealing with time. Thank you very much for watching.